Every year I do a transformation challenge with all of my clients. What this entails is a three month period starting at the beginning of the year to see who can make the best visual transformation. The winner gets whatever the year is in dollar amount. So this year it's $2,024. Always gets my clients really pumped up at the beginning of the year, helps them start the year off strong. And what this challenge also has proven is that you can make insane visual changes to your body in a short period of time. The last three years, we've had someone lose more than 40 pounds who's won. And we've also had other individuals lose over 9% body fat, which is crazy. That's a, that's a lot of body fat lost in just three months. So when, when you decide to make a change, get focused and get the right plan, you can make incredible changes. But what I'm going to be focusing on in this video is the peaking process. Every year towards the end of the challenge, I show my clients how they can look their very best in those last you know, one to two weeks. So that's what this video is going to be all about. How to basically peak for pictures that you're wanting to take or whatever kind of event that you're trying to look your best for. A lot of these strategies are what bodybuilders use to step on stage and look their best when they're competing. So, you know, even if you're not competing on stage or doing some sort of transformation challenge like this, these strategies can be good for any sort of, you know, life event, like a wedding, a beach vacation, whatever it may be. So the first time I used these strategies was actually for spring break vacation in college. All right. And it helped me like get all shredded and, and look my best while I was on, on the beach for that spring break vacation. But let's go ahead and get into it. So tip number one is carb manipulation. Okay. Towards the end of the dieting period, you'll most likely want to have your carbs at the lowest. Usually in the, the last one to two, maybe even last three weeks, you want to have your carbs pretty low. I even have some of my clients who are being really competitive in the challenge and want to be in the top three or win the challenge. I even have sometimes do keto for the, just the last you know one to three weeks. Carbs are typically the biggest lever that we pull during the dieting process because we want to get enough protein. So protein stays pretty similar. I usually keep fats pretty low and carbs is the biggest lever as far as what really changes to lower the calories across that time period. This, and then what you want to do is once you're getting you know, to the very last, like the last day or two of when you're trying to look your best is I'll have my clients add carbs back in the day up. Okay. So what this is going to do, it's going to allow your muscles to fill back up with glycogen and you're going to look your leanest and fullest on that day. That's what carb manipulation is. It's getting the carbs nice and low. But then when you're trying to look your best on that specific day, you add those carbs back in and your muscles fill back up with glycogen. And that's going to help you look lean and full with your muscles. All right. So tip number two is sodium and water manipulation. Okay. So one week out from when you're trying to look your best, you should be guzzling water like a madman. Okay, just be drinking a lot of water, like a gallon and a half to two gallons if you can. Just be drinking a lot of water one week out from when you're trying to look your best and also start adding more salt to your food. Okay, so it sounds counterintuitive, but this is going to help you retain that water for that time period um, and just try to stay as hydrated as possible one week out. But then once you get to about three days out from when you're trying to look your best, cut out the sodium and this is going to allow you to flush out a lot of that water when you cut that sodium out but also start limiting that water intake. Okay, so three days out, significantly cut the water intake down to probably about a half gallon. And then the day before you're trying to look your best, just be sipping on water minimally. You can even start doing like a sauna, sweating, doing, getting some extra sweating in to just flush out all that water weight. So this is gonna give you that dry look, you know, that kind of that dry look that say bodybuilders have on stage. Um, and you're also just going to flush out all that extra water weight. Okay. So that's water manipulation. That's how we have everyone on that day looking their best dry and lean with the sodium and water manipulation. Okay. So tip number three is to get a tan. And this one's pretty simple, um, but this can make a pretty big difference to the way that you look. If you're a pasty prince like I am, <laughs> and you just naturally have, you know, a lighter complexion, then it, it's going to make it harder to see a lot of the, the definition that, that you've created with the new look that you have after going through this transformation. So when you get a tan, that's literally why bodybuilders put spray tan on before they step on stage because it helps that definition come out and it, it makes a huge difference. So that's tip number three, pretty simple, get a tan. And then tip number four is to get a pump on that day because a pump can make a huge difference to the way that you look. I mean, you can go into the gym and when you first walk in there, you know, and then compared to when you get that pump and walk out, like 
that's what gets a lot of people addicted to going to the gym and kind of chasing that pump because it can make a drastic difference to the way you look. So get a good pump on that day. Having the extra carbs in your system is going to help with this, but focus on the muscles that show, you know, focus on the shoulders, the chest, the arms, the abs, kind of all the show muscles. Okay. So focus on those muscle groups, get a good pump. And like I said, like adding those carbs back in, this is going to help you look super full. Your muscles are going to be pumped up and you're also probably going to have some vascularity. Your veins are going to be showing everything like that. So super important, make sure to get a pump when you're trying to look your best on that specific day for the event that you're trying to look your best for. And then tip number five is the final tip and it's find good lighting. Okay. So if what you're trying to look your best for is for pictures, which is what my challenge competitors are trying to look their best for, then lighting can make a huge difference. Okay. So gyms usually have good lighting. So if you're wanting to, you know, maybe take like a progress picture, yeah, it might be a good idea to do it in a gym. I think you strategically do that so that you look good at the gym. You want to go back. So gyms usually have good lighting. Natural lighting is, is usually a good option as well. Like having the sun actually shining on you typically is a pretty good strategy, but test it out before the big day of when you're trying to look your best, like kind of know what lighting works for you. So try a few different things leading up to it. Um, but lighting a super drastic difference. I mean, you could be looking the exact same, but have two different lightings. It looks like two completely different pictures. So pay attention to the lighting, test it out first, find what works for you. Okay. So that's really it. Those are the five tips of how to look your best and make a drastic visual difference in as little as like a week's time. Like kind of just peaking is what we call it. Like peak week, peaking for that event. Okay. My bonus tip for you is past the event. Like once this is over, once you've peaked and you look your best for whatever it is that you're trying to look your best for, don't have a crazy rebound. Okay. Because the past three years that I've done the transformation challenge, whenever people make this big visual transformation and they've had something that they've been trying to, you know, peak for, for a certain period of time, a lot of times they reach that point and, you know, sometimes people will have an off screw it, Like I did it and they kind of like, you know, that now I can do whatever I want. And that's really easy to have a rebound from. So, you know, even though it's great to, to peak for an event like this and, and it keeps you motivated, it's not the end all be all, right? Like your fitness journey should be more about the process and should, should be sustainable, right? So I try to have a diet phasing technique ready for my clients after the challenge ends. Once the challenge ends, I always try to have kind of an exit strategy for them. So we usually go into more of a maintenance phase for a little bit if they've been dieting really hard. But the last thing you want to do is do like a complete 180 and just go from what you've been doing to like a screw it, whatever diet, like a seafood diet. I see it, I eat it because that's going to cause you to, to rebound and you can gain a lot of weight back in a short period of time if you do that. Okay. So that's my bonus tip for you. That's really all I got for you guys. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you liked the video, like the damn video and subscribe for more personal development content like this. I'll see you all in the next video. In the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.